A while back, I showed you how to make an induction heater using scrap parts from electronic components that I found at the dump. Over the years, that video has done extremely well, and it's now pushing toward one and a half million views. If you have not seen that video, a link will be posted at the end of this video. Now, I understand that not all viewers are going to want to make their own induction heater from scratch. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a powerful kit that you can buy at a reasonable cost. Now, the way induction heaters work is fairly simple. You have this module, and it creates high-frequency pulses in this coil known as the working coil. Those high-frequency pulses create an electromagnetic field in the center of that coil, and when a metal object is placed within the coil, electric currents or eddy currents are generated in the metal object, which causes the metal object to heat up. In the video, I'm going to be performing several voltage and current tests, as well as take a look at the output frequency to the working coil. To demonstrate, I'm going to be melting a bunch of scrap copper inside this crucible, and we're going to pour a one ounce bar. I'm also going to insert a steel rod that's rather thick, so you can see how quickly it heats up. The kit that you see right here includes everything that you see with the exception of this metal baking pan. I picked this baking pan up at Walmart, I think it was three or four bucks, and it's necessary to hold the water that's used to cool the working coil. Because we're going to be generating extremely high levels of heat, you must keep this working coil cool. So we have a pump right back here, and we have the pan to hold the cooling water. Induction heaters use extremely high currents, so you're going to need a powerful power supply like you see right here. This is a telecom rectifier, and this one is a 53 volt, 3000 watt rated unit. AC input current maximum is 18 amps, and it says 100 to 240 volts. It's important to note that the output of 3000 watts is only going to be available when the input voltage is closer to the 220 to 240 range. If you plug this into an AC receptacle at 120 volts, you're probably only going to end up with 14 or 1500 watts. And you'll see in the video, because I'm going to be testing at 120 volts, that I'm going to be connecting this up to a variac to increase the AC input voltage to around 140 volts. On the back of the telecom rectifier, you can see there's a board with the terminals. The red and black wire is your DC output, and the blue, brown, and yellow with the green is your AC input. Right over here is a circuit breaker connected to the DC output to limit current. This one here is set to trip at 63 amps. The output of the breaker ties right into this induction heater module board. This can easily handle 50 amps of current or more. It's a ZVS induction heater, which means zero voltage switching. In a minute, I'm going to remove one or both of these fans so you can take a closer look at the board. There are components on this board that get very hot when in operation. You have six MOSFETs, as well as a whole bunch of high frequency capacitors. So you need these two cooling fans running while this is in operation. To get the power to the cooling fans, you use this 12 volt, two amp switching power supply. Right over here is a connector. You can separate this to disconnect the power supply. And the other side of the wire goes directly into this module where it supplies power to the two fans and to the water circulation pump. When you purchase this, this is already put together. You just have to take the connections, plug them in, take the wires, connect them up, and you're good to go. The working coil is a 3 16th inch copper tube, and you can see it's wrapped with blue heat shrink. Included with this is a graphite crucible, slides right in, and what appears to be a high temperature aluminum oxide holder that the crucible slides into. If you want to melt metals, you're going to place it inside this crucible. If you just want to heat up metal, maybe to heat treat it, you would slide this out and then just place the metal object inside. Now the thick blanket you see right here is a ceramic fiber blanket. It can tolerate up to 1,760 degrees Celsius or 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit. This blanket is not included with this setup only the smaller blanket at the bottom that you can see, that's included. The smaller blanket is the one that's wrapped around the crucible that you can see right over here. Right here you can see I cut a piece for the top of the crucible. As it's heating to keep the heat inside, just place it on top. And here's your little pump. And these tubes are silicone. 
and the wires go right into the back of that module. Over here is the connector, you just unplug this to disconnect power to the circulation pump. And if you look right over here, you can see all this damage to the insulation on these wires. Let me show you what caused this. And right here is how my wiring got trashed. <laughs> this little devil did it. Let's take a good look at the board now. Take the screws out. Okay. With both of those cooling fans removed, you can see everything very clearly. The working coil is connected to the board using the two screws here and the two screws over here. It sits on top of three posts. The tube is pressed against the center post. The tubing was slid over the ends of the copper pipe and I clamped it just to make sure it does not slide off. The last thing you want to see is water pouring all over that board. Each one of these large heat sinks has a MOSFET bolted onto it and the MOSFET is an IRFP 260N. Each one of these resistors is on the gate to those MOSFETs and it's a 5 watt 470 ohm ceramic resistor. Over here you have these inductors and that's to limit the inrush current into the circuit when it's first turned on. Down the center you have 12.033 microfarad 630 volt high frequency capacitors. They're all connected in parallel and in parallel with the working coil. The two of these together is called a tank circuit. The frequency output of this module is adjusted with the capacitor values or the working coil. If you change the diameter of the coil, if you put fewer turns, that's all going to have an effect on the output frequency. Okay, let me put this all back together so we can power this up. Now that this is back together, I'm going to make sure this is in the off position and I'm going to power everything up. You're going to hear the cooling fan for the rectifier as well as the cooling fan for the module. The pump is extremely quiet, so you're not going to hear that. You're going to see some movement in the water. Right here, you can see the AC voltage, just under 117. And the output voltage is 48 volts. Right here is the frequency that the induction heater operates at. As you just saw, the steel rod heated up nicely, but it did take a little bit of time to heat up. The reason why is because of the input voltage from that unit. I did a bunch of tests and I noticed that if the input voltage is at least 135 volts AC, everything heats up extremely quickly. So the higher the voltage, the faster the objects are going to heat and the hotter they're going to get. If I place the crucible inside this holder and repeated the test exactly the way I just showed you with the metal rod, this would start to glow but only very little. And I notice what else happens. The power supply will cycle on and off. It will not stay running. So in order to melt metals, you're going to need at least 135 volts going into that power supply unit. 
The only problem with 220 is that the water is going to get very, very hot extremely quick. The only way around that would be to use a very large holding tank for the water. So let's take this outside. I'm going to connect up my Variac to boost the 117 volt AC input up to right around 140 volts. And then we're going to take some scrap copper, place it inside, and I'm going to pour a bar. I'm going to take the copper that's inside, I'm going to melt it down, and we're going to pour it inside this mold. To keep the crucible off the bottom just a little bit, I'm going to place one of the pieces of ceramic fiber, and it'll elevate it just enough so I can grab it with the tongs to pour the mold. Right here you can see how beautifully that copper bar polished up. If this induction heater has no problem melting copper at almost 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, then you can be assured it will also melt silver, gold, and other metals. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.